Hunter x Hunter episode 129. Yomi ga etta o wa, mizukara o meru emu to nanori, kiyoku o torimodosu tame. Cute little Yupi. Yeah. Wow, I just shattered him into oblivion. But it worked. He has incurred debt. He did more than lose. <laughs> he did way more than lose. He lost and also put us in the negatives. He undid a lot of the greatness that we had accomplished. Spiritually. Though Poof is on his way to do a whole lot more. You, it's all your fault. Heart indeed. A lot of things came out of Netero's heart. Formidable enemy X and X clear objective. What is our objective? <laughs> it's not so clear to me right now. Oh. Oh. Poor Kamugi. Where's my lovely friend? You know, I was thinking about Kamugi today because now on YouTube I'm posting some of her first episodes. I've seen her referred to as best girl and I was wondering why why that is. And my first instinct was to go to the usual thing of like, it's not just that she's really a nice person, but also that she's talented. But thinking about it some more, I don't think her skill in Gunji actually is really that important. Or at least the Gunji is not important. I mean, it could be anything for the point to still be made. I think the importance of Kamugi is the beauty of her potential overall and the myriad of ways that can be expressed in humans. Gunji, you might not think of it as the most useful thing. Usually when I talk about like, people will forgive a lot of your personality flaws and traits if you're effective. That happens when you are doing things that are really useful that people need. Gunji maybe not falling in that category. But like this little girl who apparently is not so little, but she's an adult, I've learned, who trips over herself and bumbles her words and can't speak correctly, has this amazing gift within her. That I think is what's crucial, especially from the king's perspective, where, oh wow, I can't really put a value on the human soul. People surprise you in all sorts of ways. You never know what someone has to offer by first appearances. <laughs> Also, Yupi knows what it is if he looks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Everyone tries. What did mountains ever do to anime characters? Uh-oh, he's being exposed. And yet the enemy still lives. He got some explaining to do. Myth and Yupi, like a small child. I made a deal. I used leverage. And then I let them live. I left. Oh man, there's not a lot of time to go over all this and explain honor and all that. Those are difficult concepts. That's honest. The king might get it. He might have an inkling. The king also values honesty. I didn't lie like that traitor poof. Lucky. <laughs> we? You have obtained the most convenient body. This is a brother pact, a brother vow? What an honor. The king is as generous as he is handsome. Look at those calves! Oh no! He's getting really paranoid. Right, it's for the king, etc. Etc. She's in good hands. I can imagine Kalua's electricity attacks being really useful against the little poofs. <laughs> this man just cannot engage in combat. There's a couple of those. Who says that's one of the biggest traitors, in a sense? It's a very positive thinking. <laughs> it's interesting to think. Damn it, Netero. <laughs> I mean, he didn't make the best case for us. Netero destroyed the human race in his favorite t-shirt. Part of me wants to have an arc where the king wins and I can see his whole plan fully implemented. I think that would be really interesting. Oh, 
分身としてものが見える限界まで細かく分散し探索範囲を拡大 We're safe as long as he doesn't figure out the whole nano machines up your nose thing. You gotta defeat him spiritually. I'm not so sure. Oh, that's true. They might think he's trying to help. Oh, Kalua seeing through it, or suspecting at least. Always the strategist. Oh, they figured it out. This is it. She's right there. And then he hits her with everything he has. The fact that Kalu could sniff that out is amazing. And if they're really following in the spirit of Hunter x Hunter and Moral, they've stacked it so that they win either way. Couldn't control himself. Blue Ram might very well just be right next to them. With lightning. He's not even there anymore. This came full circle. Oh, I hope Knuckle comes from behind again. With a dead uppercut. Oh, I don't like this. Oh no, is it, it's not nanomachines, is it? I'm so afraid of the nanomachines up the nose. I totally would. For the sake of the king's soul. That person was always staring at me with hatred. She might believe it. I gotta go see my friend. She doesn't know he's an insect, probably. She just thinks he's the supreme leader. But she's so sweet, she wouldn't even care if he was an insect. He's just her Gunji friend. She's only seen him on the playing board, and he's at his best when he's playing Gunji. And it's crazy how far this this has come. There we go. Well, speaking of stacking the game. I think... I think you make a stand here, right? <laughs> I think... With Poof's weakened state... He has upgraded his then such an incredible rate with that electricity discovery. Wow. Wow. And tremendous range. No fear. No thoughts of fleeing. That's scary. Yeah, cannot find out what I'm doing. Yeah, I love that they're still here. Just standing here through all this. I don't know. It doesn't sound that appealing. That's her. Speaking of dumb, foolish creatures. Something about that triggered a memory. You're deceiving me again.
I know that feeling of something really important. It's like just on the periphery of your cognition. And then you start thinking about it. And then that just leads you to be thinking about the fact that you're thinking about it. And then all hope is lost for that thought. I've lost so many good trains of thought in the excitement of thinking I'm about to have a really great thought. I think it's deliberate that Poof is explaining what he thinks to be glamorous. And, it, you know, it's a shot of their drooling faces. Is that really what you want to be a king of? Poof's arrogance and value judgment also probably familiar and triggering that thought of Kamuki. That's once what the king thought and felt and discovered otherwise. Similarly, I wonder if it's at all a source of joy or pleasure in an enduring way to rule by force. I mean, I'm sure it's great materially, but you know that no one actually likes you, right? No one's choosing you. I mean, in that sense, it's similar to a path he went down in Gunji, where he was losing the Gunji game and tried to intimidate Kamuki, but couldn't. There's certain things you can't get through power and conniving and manipulation. A lot of things can be bought, but some things can't. It's like how with excessive amounts of money, you can essentially buy a beautiful partner, but you can't make them love you. You could just make them dependent on you. That's what I want. That's what I really want. Oh yeah, if he sees the Gunji board, it's over. Poof is so great at just leaving battles, conflicts. It's all over the place. He's traveled a really great distance and has gone nowhere. This is an awkward walk. It's over already? They're not even around. They just left the, the field? God, why does it get the vibe that, like, it's a death march? Like, one's just marching her into a grave that she's gonna build herself. I wonder what Kite would or will say to see go now. I mean, you need to give him the advice that you don't want to give any humanity or sympathy to your enemies, right? For the ants. I wonder if he'd rethink that, seeing this whole thing. As someone who cares about Gon. Maybe that'll be the wake-up call for Gon. I mean, Kite is one of the few people he respects, being in some ways a surrogate for Jing. Separate thought, but interesting to me. The fact that Kamuki can't see what the king is, is kind of a physical way of her not seeing, not really distinguishing between human and ant. And I think that that's been borne out. It's not really about the species anymore. Ants are probably here to stay, I'm imagining. They're just something else that's been added to the world. Their value, their importance, their goodness or not goodness, it's not going to come down to the species that they are. It's going to come down to what they each individually decide, which maybe is the answer to the whole Netero don't underestimate humanity and the, the ambiguous nature of that. It would be wrong to make a blanket assessment on all of humanity because of its worst things. It would also be a mistake to sugarcoat humanity just because we're human and because we have beautiful elements. It's all of it. And a reach, but maybe it's something like part of how the assessment partly falls down to how well you're playing the game according to the rules of the game, which is life. And I don't mean rules as in law. I mean rules as an objective good and evil. Actually, come to think of it, there's an example of that from this episode. Yuppie said it. He said, I don't quite know why, but I feel like if I killed them, it would have been a loss. It would have been a win from a very limited perspective. There are other things at stake than the immediate outcome of the game. It's kind of like how obvious it was that if the king had smashed the, the gunji board, that would have been a clear loss. But him losing in Gunji is not necessarily a loss. In fact, those are some of his greatest, most beautiful moments. It's sort of just the vehicle and conduit for so many amazing things. So too, in this case, I think defeating the ants does not necessarily mean victory. There's a danger to their characters, especially going outside of just the, the outcome of this event. 